The year was 1885. Jovita Idar was born to Nicasio and Jovita Idar in Laredo, Texas. Her father owned and ran a newspaper, La Cronica, a source of news and activism for Mexican-American rights. This would have a lifelong impact on Jovita. Her family was better off than many, allowing her access to education. She was unusual for her time in that she was able to go to school and she ended up getting a teaching certificate. So she started out as a teacher in a little community outside of Laredo, very under-resourced, very poor. It was frustrating for her that they were so under-resourced and um, she ended up quitting and going back into the family business. The family business was evolving, combining political action with reporting. The family organizes the first Mexican Congress, a gathering of people to talk about issues Mexican Americans are facing. Discrimination, violence, poverty, rural economic conditions. It was supposed to be at that time that people of Mexican descent on this side of the border would have the full rights of U.S. citizenship post Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, 1848, right? But that is not how things played out. Jovita took the concept further. Concerned now about women's rights as well, she creates the first Mexican Feminist League in 1911, designed to offer a free education for Mexican children. She goes to work at the El Progreso newspaper in Laredo. She writes an article on President Wilson's decision to send troops to the border, and that angered some. The Texas Rangers um, learn about it, and they come to El Progreso's press and try to enter. And she stands in the doorway, and she's a petite woman, and refuses to let them enter. And these are guys on horses with rifles, and so they do leave. The following day they come back and she's not there, and they do go in and, and wreck the place. By 1917, Jovita married Bartolo Juarez. He gets a job in San Antonio, so they move. Jovita continues in journalism. So she becomes very involved in the Methodist church here in San Antonio, and she's writing for a Methodist paper that's here. So she's still writing, um, and it's uh, El Geraldo Cristiano, and, or, or the Christian Herald. She writes in that Christian newspaper about um, some of the same things she had been writing about. She's also working at the Robert B. Green Hospital, which was the charity hospital on the west side. She's helping educate moms about um, particularly sanitation. Why? Because the west side does not have any connections to a sewage system. Also, the west side is experiencing a really serious tuberculosis endemic. A lot of folks on the west side worked in industries that led to just little scratches in their lungs from breathing in things like pecan shell dust. Tuberculosis is very easy to catch if you have any kind of damage in your lungs, which unfortunately a lot of people on the west side did. Years of exposure end up affecting Jovita. Eventually, she develops tuberculosis, but her tuberculosis then got compounded by pneumonia. And so her official cause of death was, was pneumonia, but certainly because she also had tuberculosis, her, her lungs were vulnerable. Jovita Idar passes in San Antonio in 1946. Posthumously, she is honored with her face on the U.S. quarter. I think getting Jovita Idar on a quarter is a way of saying, this is a great American, right? This is an American worthy of putting on a, a U.S. Uh, coin. Uh, but it's also a way of elevating how many people know about her.